Jumping right into notes part three with a meme. There you see Sparta and Athens, and then Persia. Just a little, I figured this is a nice meme to recap previously, notes part two. So notes part three is going to deal with the fallout from, you know, this situation. So an important thing to know going into this is Persia is still here. The Greeks winning the Persian War doesn't mean the Greeks now get Persia. Persia. All it means is Persia doesn't conquer Greece. The same way that um, when you learned the Revolutionary War and America defeated the British, that didn't mean that America took over England. That just meant that England doesn't get to take over America or keep control of America. So, on to notes part three, the Delian League. So as we know, the Persians didn't succeed at taking over Greece, but they are still right across the Aegean Sea. So the Persians are all right here, still in Ionia, and then obviously they're in Egypt, and they go all the way to India, as we know. So they're a threat that Greece has to deal with. So the Athenians suggest that the Greek city-states form something called a defensive league. Defensive league is kind of like an alliance, but it's like a group alliance called a protective group. A lot of city-states join. Sparta does not, which should not surprise anyone. Because knowing Sparta, and what we know about Sparta, they don't like new ideas. So when Athens says, hey, do you want to join this new alliance? Sparta's like, Sparta has never needed an alliance before. Sparta does not join alliances. So it's called the Delian League because the headquarters are on the island of Delos, which is right over here in the Aegean Sea. So um, at first, it is a love fest between Athens and the city-states that join. So let me gonna recycle an old meme, but this sums up the feelings going on at the start of the Delian League. Everybody is like, Athens, you have a great idea. You're so smart. Um, and then this is like the people not in the Delian League, like Sparta and, and all that. Sparta actually, so interesting story. Sparta actually does join an alliance. It's called the Peloponnesian League, and here's how this works. So there's a city-state right over here called Corinth um, on Peloponnesus, and they say to Sparta, hey, Athens is having the Delian League. We should join, the Pel join us in the Peloponnesian League. And Sparta's like, no, Sparta does not do alliances. And Corinth says to Sparta, but... The only thing to know about the Peloponnesian League is if you're on Peloponnesus, you're in the Peloponnesian League. So Sparta's like, hmm. Sparta has always been on Peloponnesus because that's where Sparta lives. Sparta will join your al alliance. And again, I don't know why I talk about Sparta in third person. I just think it makes it more fun. So the Delian League sets out some rules. The first rule is once a city-state became a member of the Delian League, it could not leave the Delian League unless all other member city-states agreed. And the reason why they wanted that rule is they're worried about Persia. And this was to prevent any city-state from deciding to surrender to Persia if Persia attacked again. This way they can stand together and stay strong. Athens controls the navy as part of the Delian League, because Athens has the best ships. So Athens says, listen, instead of all of you trying to build up your navy, you know we have the best, we can defend all of you. So instead of you spending your money to make your navy half as good as our navy, give us the money for that you were going to use to buy ships, We'll make our navy even better, and we're in an alliance, so we got you. We're protecting you. So the, the member states are like, all right. Remember that, that 
meme there. They're like, yeah, Athens, we got this. Things are fine in the dealing league for a while, but it's about to take a turn when Athens gets way too controlling and way too bossy. Athens starts to get paranoid about ships sailing around the Aegean Sea without their knowledge because they're so on the lookout. Just in case, Persia's already come to attack them twice. They're like, we don't want this again. So they make a rule that says city-states have to ask Athens for permission to sail or travel. Now, in Athens' view, it's to keep the Aegean Sea safe. It's going to annoy the other city-states because it's really annoying to have to ask Athens for permission. And sometimes Athens denies it and it starts hurting the city-states' economies because Athens merchants can come and go as they please, but other city-states have to ask Athens for permission. So, Athens then feels that the court system of the other city-states are not good. So Athens says, our court system is the best. If anyone commits a crime in any of our towns, send them to Athens, we'll judge. And initially, it's kind of like one of those good deals, like, oh, that'll save us some time and all this kind of stuff. But the problem is, these city-states have different laws. They're being judged on the laws of Athens that they didn't create. And it's going to lead to controversy. Now, trade in the area is controlled so much by Athens, Athenian coins start to replace the money of other city-states. And the other city-states get angry about it because nobody is using their money. They're only using the money of Athens. Now, if there was the slightest hint of rebellion in a city-state in the Delian League, the Athenians sent soldiers in to stop the rebellions. Now, in Athens' view, they're doing it because they're like, well, we can't have civil war in your city because if the Persians come, that'll make us weak. So we're going to send troops to keep order. But the, the, the city-states view it as Athens interfering in their own personal business. So basically what happens is this alliance called the Dillian League, starts off as a good idea, but eventually is going to become like Athens has its own mini empire. And you might be thinking, why don't the city-states just leave? They can't. Remember the rule, you can only leave the Dillian League unless all other members agree. So if they all want to leave, Athens is a member too, Athens could say, nope, I don't agree, and they're all stuck in this deal. Now, the main leader of the Delian League um, is from Athens, and his name is Pericles. He's really popular in Athens, and he's given the nickname First Citizen, like the best person. Now, since Athens had been you know, in the Persian War, had the ultimate sacrifice, meaning they gave up their city. They let the Persians burn it as part of the plan for the good of Greece. Pericles says there would be nothing greater to stick it to Persia than to rebuild Athens. So he convinces the Delian League to pay for the rebuilding of Athens. But he doesn't rebuild it the normal way. He makes the rebuilding extravagant, extra fancy. And when the Delian League complains, he says, no, we're sticking it to Persia because they burned down our city and now Athens is going to be even nicer than it was before. And it's at this time that the way famous Parthenon, which is a temple to the goddess Athena, is built on the Acropolis of Athens. And this is something I'm sure you have seen at some point before. Right here. This is the Parthenon. Very famous. One of the major tourist attractions of Greece. Pericles also 
has something constructed that's pretty smart. So it's called the long walls. Basically, they're two parallel walls that are hot. The walls are high up like a fort and stretch from the city state of Piraeus to Athens, about five miles. And I'll show you a picture that'll make this make sense. This was to ensure that if enemies ever tried to surround Athens, they could get supplies and food from Piraeus. So let me show you these long walls. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. You can kind of see it in the picture here. There we go. So here's Piraeus. Here's Athens. So these are walls that are that and they're hidden. They're not out in the open. There's this is all like forests where there's walls hidden. And the the idea is that if Athens was ever surrounded, they could have the secret path to Piraeus and still get supplies. Pretty smart. Now, Pericles leads Athens for about 30 years, and then he dies horribly, that you'll learn about in uh, the next notes, notes part four. Um, art, philosophy, literature soar during this time. Many people move to Athens to live, and this time period in Greece is referred to as the Golden Age, the time where things are great, especially in Athens, thanks to the Delian League paying for everything. And there you have it, notes part three.